My students sometimes ask me, I don't get it, how can you be a scientist and a Christian? I mean, how can you believe in human evolution and Adam and Eve? I explain to them that my belief in God is strengthened by how He has touched my life and how His Word speaks to me. But God also declares Himself to me when I admire the expansiveness of the heavens or the complexity of the structures in our cells. You see, studying God's created world through science should bring us closer to God because we are studying His work. So anything we learn from it has to be consistent with who He is and how He created. We are seeing how God's providence sustains and allows the laws of nature. For example, we understand much of the detailed process of how a fertilized egg becomes a newborn baby, but that doesn't make it any less of a miracle. And it follows that just because humans may have evolved from other species doesn't mean that God isn't orchestrating the process. The Bible uses the metaphor of God as potter many times. Isaiah 64, 8 states, Yet you, Lord, are our Father, we are the clay, you are the potter, we are the work of your hands. The potter's work is evolutionary, not instantaneous. It uses centrifugal force, friction, gravity, pressure, and chemical bonding to forge the shapes that form. Yet there is purpose, beauty, and design that emerge because of the intention of the potter. Genesis tells us that God made man out of dust. This also paints a mental picture of God metaphorically sculpting us from clay or earth. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Out of the earth he created us, from simple elements to complex biochemistry with amazing intricacy and complexity. Evolution is a process of creation. All living things were forged in the same process, and in this way, humans are no exception. Scientific discoveries from many different fields of study provide overwhelming evidence that our ancestors weren't always human. There is a historical record written in fossils, artifacts, and in the sequence of our genes. This leaves very little doubt that humans have diverged from common ancestors we share with other primates. Our ancestors did not always have the ability to understand and communicate spiritual ideas. As creation unfolded and human brains developed, there was a point at which our ancestors were able to understand who God is. This is the point where we became different from other living things. This is when we were created in God's image. Other human relatives, such as Neanderthals, use tools and symbols, but complex language and spirituality are unique to our species. Evidence that supports this is found in paintings, sculpture, adornments, and grave ornaments dating to less than 100,000 years ago. When did our ancestors graduate from being primitive tool users to being sophisticated innovators and artisans that believed in an afterlife? Science may never be able to determine when this advent of spirituality occurred or even if it occurred gradually or suddenly. But what is clear is that it did happen and that transition changed us and that change was revolutionary. Was it only a difference in our anatomy or brain structure that was the secret to our success as a species? Could it be that the key to the spiritual transformation was more like new revelation than improved anatomy? If God revealed himself to man, then the invention of language would allow this understanding to be shared with others. This might explain its rapid spread through the rest of humanity. Just as an artist knows when his masterpiece is ready to be presented in a place of honor above other forms he has created, God knew when his creative form had the ability to know him and to love him and to enter a relationship with him. This point in human history could have been when humankind, perhaps just one man and woman, became a living soul created in God's image. I believe humans were shaped and created by God for millions of years. I believe he shaped and created us from a fertilized egg in nine months. And he doesn't stop there, does he? He's still shaping us through our experiences, through the reading of his word and through prayer. He's still working on his masterpiece that is you and I.